On this edition of Paint Your Engine, let's have a go at something a little different, the LMS Turbo Motive. Before we start though, I'd just like to give a thank you to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon recently. If you really do like this series of videos and you'd like to help it continue, then please feel free to at least consider becoming a patron from as little as £3.50 a month. It really does help. Now this was one of the UK's most famous experimental steam locomotives, which again, didn't take off. But let's imagine for a moment that it captured the public's attention and became the next big thing. So yes, one Art Deco style poster coming right up. And to try and get the proportions as good as possible, I'm going to take advice from one of the comments in one of my previous videos and try to draw the outline of the poster first. It might seem a little bit like paint by numbers, but let's just see how it works. And let's see how many times it takes for me to get the lettering in particular right. The Turbo Motive is a story of innovation and tragedy. The idea of using a steam turbine instead of linear pistons to drive an engine had been tried in Britain before, with the North British Reed Ramsey steam turbine electric engine of 1910. But while the concept enjoyed more success overseas, the UK only had one mainline foray into steam turbine locomotion. In 1935, William Stanier took the basis of a Princess Royal Pacific and inserted an 18-blade turbine supplied by Metropolitan Vickers. This turbine directly drove the front driving axle by a reduction gearbox, which eliminated the need for the usual four sets of Walshart's valve gear. The result was a locomotive with 2,400 horsepower, which performed just as well as an ordinary Princess Royal, but with far less hammer blow, because, of course, there was no heavy valve gear hammering all that energy into the earth as it was going along. Number 6202 was normally allocated to Camden Depot and hauled the 8.30am service from London to Liverpool, returning the same day on the 5.25pm departure. Over six days a week, the engine would rack up more than 2,300 miles. In fact, the overall reliability and mileage of this engine was pretty good for a one-off experiment, Keep in mind Fowler's Fury, Bullied's Leader, or that Kitson Still Meme engine, I mean hybrid engine, didn't go beyond the testing phase. Gresley's Hush Hush fared much better, racking up 90,000 miles in original form, but it took her six years to reach it, while the turbo motive managed 128,000 miles in just 18 months. Not bad, considering when the engine was doing 90 miles an hour, her turbine was spinning at 13,500 times a minute. Unfortunately, Gracie, as the engine was nicknamed, had her problems. She had a separate turbine for going backwards, but this was much smaller and only had four blades. So going forward, she had the pulling power of a Princess Royal. But going backwards, she barely had the strength of a Terrier, which made her incapable of reversing empty stock uphill out of Euston Station. She was also hopeless at throwing smoke clear of the driver's view so she had to be fitted with custom smoke deflectors, which made her look a little bit ugly. She was expensive too. The first Princess Royal cost just over £14,600 to build. The second was about 1300 quid cheaper, and the remaining 10 were less than 10 grand a piece. But the turbo motive cost more than £22,400 to build. But the main problem was something much bigger. Infrastructure. The turbine itself didn't need new blades very often, but because the engine was a one-off experiment, the amount of time spent waiting for new parts to come from Met Vickers could become unacceptable. If there was a batch of these engines instead of just one, then there could have been room for a stockpile of spare parts, but of course there wasn't. Now the attitude towards experiments wasn't such a problem in the 30s, but after World War II, there just wasn't room for complicated engines. Apart from the ones that were diesel, of course. After 441,629 miles in traffic, Gracie was withdrawn on the 6th of May 1950, before being rebuilt as a conventional locomotive with Duchess cylinders and driving wheels, but the boiler of a Princess Royal. She emerged on the 15th of August 1952, the day after Princess Anne's second birthday, so naturally, she was named after the royal baby. But of course, she's remembered for possibly the worst reason that any engine could be remembered for, because after just two months of service in this form, she became one of three engines destroyed in the horrendous rail disaster at Harrow and Wealdstone, which claimed 112 lives. 
After just 11,443 miles in rebuilt form, the engine was put into storage and on the 22nd of May 1954, she was officially written off and sent for scrap. The outcome had its own good news and bad news. The good news was that it left a gap in the fleet of express passenger engines, which was filled by Riddle's one-off 8P Pacific Duke of Gloucester, which many believe to be the most advanced steam locomotive in the UK. But the bad news was, when the really advanced steam locomotive was outshopped in 1935, we just continued building different variants of the same engine we've been building since the 1830s. Oh yeah, and to anyone who's interested in the type of paints I've been trying out, these acrylics came from Reeves, which are a little bit more expensive than the bold meal ones, but I don't know, do these work to you? Tell me what you think. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed painting it. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more, then please feel free to like, share, subscribe, discuss, contribute to Steam Locos in profile on Patreon, and why not have a go yourself? Why not paint your engine?